Hi, in today's quick video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks regarding upgrades and updates to your Home Assistant environment. This is going to be targeted mostly towards people fairly new with Home Assistant, but there might be a few other tidbits of information in there as well. I'm going to talk about assuring you have good backups, how to apply these updates, and how to potentially troubleshoot errors or issues after the upgrade. So hang around. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. If you're a Home Assistant user, you probably already know there tends to be a lot of updates and upgrades that come out. It seems that hardly any time goes by at all without some kind of core or Home Assistant operating system or an ESP home or some other upgrade that pops up in your system. Now, I had another video where I debated about whether the frequency of these updates were a good thing or a bad thing, and I'm not going to go into that here. But one thing from that video that I do want to stress here is I think it's important that you don't fall too far behind. The problem is all of these updates, especially the core updates that happen every month, usually come with a lot of breaking changes. And if you skip a bunch of updates, then decide to upgrade, you're just asking for a lot more complication in trying to resolve any issues. Now, if you've been using Home Assistant for a while, you're probably very familiar with doing these upgrades and you probably have your own processes and procedures. I'm going to show the process that I use and it will be somewhat dependent upon your particular install or environment. This does apply only to the full Home Assistant operating system install, not necessarily the Docker version or the core or supervised version. Whenever an update or updates are available, it will be indicated by a number down here on this little gear icon for your settings menu. As you can see, I have two updates pending. One of them is the Home Assistant Core, which is a normal monthly release with new features and bug fixes. Generally, if something goes wrong with that, you can restore from your normal Home Assistant configuration backup and be back to where you were. The other one, however, is an upgrade to the Home Assistant operating system. That's the underlying operating system that runs Home Assistant. If something goes wrong there, it can be a little bit more difficult to restore back to the previous version and usually requires you to go out to a command line. The first thing I do before I do any upgrade at all, I wanna check the status of my backup. So I'm gonna come down here to system. I'm gonna to go to backups and I can see I have a full backup that was done just nine hours ago. Now this is being done on the, my data disk, which is the same disk or environment where Home Assistant is running. If you have attached network storage, you can back that up to the network. But in my case, I am also using Google Drive backup. So I can check here as well and see that my last backup was at 2.30 a.m. this morning. So I've got a copy on the local machine and I have a copy out in Google Drive. It's always a good idea to have a copy of your backup of your home assistant configuration at least one other place other than the home assistant machine itself. So having that home assistant backup kind of covers this in the case something goes wrong with the Home Assistant core upgrade and something quits working. As long as Home Assistant boots up, we can always restore back through the UI to a previous version. But what happens if something goes wrong with operating system upgrade or Home Assistant simply won't boot up after an upgrade? Well, that's where you need to find a way or have a way to back up the entire machine, including the operating system. Now do note, it is possible to restore a previous version of the operating system. If the device will boot up, you can actually go to the command line and issue a command, downgrade Home Assistant to a previous version of the operating system. But again, that assumes the device boots up. So it's better to have a backup copy of the entire machine or machine state. For me, fortunately, I'm running Home Assistant on Proxmox. Proxmox has a number of advantages here. First of all, it allows me to do a full backup of the entire virtual machine. So I'll always come in here, make sure that I have a current backup. This backup is from one day ago, which is probably good enough if something were to go wrong, but I'm also gonna take advantage of what Proxmox offers, which is called snapshots. So I'm gonna come in here to snapshots and I'm gonna take a snapshot, which is gonna save that entire machine state as of right this minute. And so if something does go wrong, I can quickly restore that snapshot and be right back to where I was. And I'm gonna take a snapshot. So now I have a snapshot. If something were to go wrong with my upgrade, I have this snapshot, I have the full machine backup, and I have a copy of the Home Assistant configuration file. But what if you aren't running Home Assistant in a VM? Let's say, for example, you're running on a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD card. Well, there are ways that you can back up the entire system, but it's gonna require that you shut down Home Assistant. 
So for example, with an SD card on a Raspberry Pi, you could shut it down, remove the SD card, and use something like Win32 uh, Disk Imager to create an image of that entire SD card that you could then theoretically write back to that card and restore if something were to go wrong. It's not very convenient, so VMs have a lot of advantages when it comes to applying upgrades. If you are interested in knowing how to move your home assistant from something like a Raspberry Pi to Proxmox, I do have another video that provides a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. But now that we're sure that we've got backups of everything we might need should something go wrong, I'm going to go ahead and apply the Home Assistant Operating System upgrade first. Now again, I can really read the release announcement, which I always recommend you do for anything, any breaking changes, but really I'm just going to go ahead and click the install. This does take a while. In fact, I've found that doing the operating system upgrades take a fair amount of time longer than just applying the core updates. So you're going to see that Home Assistant is going to restart here in just a second. And the best thing to do is just be patient, leave this screen up, and we will come back once the reboot is finished. And now the, whole, the startup is complete. And dismiss this dialog. And the first thing I like to do is I always like to go down to my system and my logs to see if anything is crazy here. Okay, I've got a number of error codes here that I normally don't see on a restart. This one here on my Octoprint always shows up because my 3D printer is currently off. So now I'm going to need to do some double checking to see what these other errors might be. Okay, as far as I could tell, everything in Home Assistant was working fine. I just did another restart, and this time when Home Assistant restarted, I just got the one error message about Octoprint. So everything looks good. Everything looks successful. All my dashboards uh, appear to be fine. I don't have any errors anywhere. The operating system upgrade seems to be a success. Now, if you do continue to have lingering errors, there are other Home Assistant logs that you can check. For example, I can check the supervisor. I can come down here and look for anything that might be flagged in yellow or especially red. That might give me some indication of where the error is. There are other logs that you can check here as well. Now, if you do have an error message pop up and it really doesn't make sense to you, you don't know how to fix it, I found something that works almost all of the time. Copy that error message, open up Google, type in Home Assistant, and then paste the contents of that error message. There's such a large community of Home Assistant users out there, odds are someone else has already discovered this same error mm -hmm. and someone else has figured out how to fix it or resolve it. Or it will be a known Home Assistant issue and you'll just have to wait for a patch to come out to fix it. And if you still have major problems and things are all wrong, that's why we created those backups. We can try restoring the core first, but since we have a, haven't upgraded that, we may need to either downgrade the OS or restore one of our system backups, either through the VM or that image from the SD card. So at this point, I'm just left with the Home Assistant core update. Now, normally these are a little bit less nerve wracking, at least for me, but in this case, you do want to take a look at the release announcement if you haven't done that. In particular, you're wanting to come down here and take a look at the breaking changes. And I can see for me here that they are once again screwing around with MQTT. And from posts later in the forum, uh, this is going to kick up errors, especially if you're using Zigbee to MQTT. I use ZHA, but I also have a lot of my own custom devices that use MQTT discovery. So I am expecting to see at least some temporary errors after I do this upgrade. So for that reason, I'm going to jump back over here to Proxmox and I'm going to take another snapshot. I've already got one, but this is before I did the OS upgrade. So I'm going to take another snapshot. I'm going to call this one before core 23. Uh, underscore eight and I'm going to take another quick snapshot of this that way if something does go wrong I can either restore from my home assistant configuration backup or I can simply restore or roll back this snapshot and I will, won't have to apply that system upgrade again okay, having looked over the release announcement I'm ready to do the install uh, by default it is going to create another backup before updating since I already have a configuration backup from last night and I have a VM backup and I have that snapshot, I'm not gonna create another backup. I'm just gonna go ahead and click install. Once again, this will take a few minutes. Uh, be patient. You will see Home Assistant disconnect and restart down here in the corner. We will come back after the install and reboot is complete. Okay, Home Assistant has restarted. Interestingly, I have a notification here. Let's take a look at that. And it's telling me that my, again, my discovery could not be set up. 
So let's take a look at the logs and we say integration not found. So now I'm going to have to figure out a way to fix that. Well, it didn't take much Googling to find a forum post that led me back to the breaking changes that apparently I missed. If you have discovery still listed in your YAML configuration, it has now been removed from Home Assistant and can no longer be used. When I went and looked, sure enough, I had discovery. So I simply removed that and rebooted Home Assistant. And after removing that from my Home Assistant configuration file and restarting, I come back up and this time my logs are clear. And I will go through and check all of my entities and everything in my dashboards just like I normally do. But I now have no upgrades available and I'm successfully upgraded. If I do find something wrong, I have all those multiple versions to restore back to prior versions. So that's just a quick overview of how I apply updates and upgrades in Home Assistant. Your situation may be a little bit different, but again, I think it's important that you stay somewhat up to date and do apply those upgrades and updates uh, not too long after they come out. Well, that's going to do it. If you found anything in this video you like, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my videos and ding the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new content. And as always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.